Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my Essential Messages. My name is Bobby Richardson, and I will be your guide for today. So I'm going live here in Zoom because I want to practice for um for Thursday. Hang on, I just see that there's an echo there. There's a 20, I've found out there's a 20 second delay. So that's why I didn't see the chat bar straight away. But I do see it now. So I think I've got this all sussed. <laughs> Yay. Any case, um, today's reading or channel messages is straight from the Palladians and they want to talk about contact. Uh, I did get a really long, well, a couple of paragraphs of information coming through. So I'll follow through with that soon. And then we will discuss this whole contact thing. And the reason why it's the Palladians that are coming through with us. Good morning, Jules. Good to see you. So, yeah, um, let me just get my, my word up. And then there are a couple of other little um, messages that came through. So I'll start off with those and then we'll go into the contact thing. One of the ones that came through was to do with grieving. And um, this actually came through a wee while ago and then I wrote it down like just a few days ago. But the reason why they're bringing it up is because there are people out there that still feel that grieving, crying, that sort of thing is a bad thing. And it's so it's so um, interesting when you really understand what's going on. They say grieving is not the issue. Um, it's the solution <laughs> to an already tense body holding on to emotions that are needing to be felt so that you can release and then know the love you denied yourself underneath the tension. So if you're grieving, you've already had the problem. You've already got the uh, tenseness, the the um, resistance within yourself, um, the feeling into the lack of, the feeling in, that you, you know, not into the love. And so it kind of can build or it can just snap into like feeling like crying straight away. You know, with me, I just release and then I'm over it and then I release and then I'm over it. And I actually would prefer it that way rather than this build up of tension that actually creates different choices in your life. So when you're building up tension and you're not looking at problem or you're not releasing it in the right moment and just moving on, just like a child would, then your choices while you're building up that tension are all to do with trying to avoid the tension, trying to avoid crying, trying to avoid. And so you don't make clear choices that are moving you along a good path. So it's better off with this body that we have. That's the reason why we cry. That's the reason why, you know, God allowed us to, or we allowed ourselves through God or whatever you want to call it, or source energy or the universe to release that. Um, otherwise, you know, because we are in a, um, we are just love going on a journey in a body that has resistance. So that with the resistance that happens, it has to be, a, uh, there will be always moments where you feel this tension, but that is also the clue of you are not feeling into the power of yourself. You're not feeling into the love of yourself. You're denying something within you. You're thinking that the outside world is is uh, got more control over you than you have and that sort of thing. Um, so if you're crying or you feel like crying, then that's just at the point of, well, you've built up enough tension within yourself to release it. And so the tension was already happening. So it's not the crying. You've already, you've already experienced the, the tension. So yeah, just, they just really wanted to bring that up for those that are like, I can't cry, I'm not going to cry, I'm going to look like a brave person. Well, you're you're already, just because you're not crying doesn't mean that <laughs> you're brave. I mean, holding on to tension and tension and tension and not feeling into the love of who you are, is that bravery? I'm not sure. <laughs> Any case, that was one of the messages that came through. Um, 
The other ones that come through was more to do with contacts. So we will get into those. But I want to go into a bit of history, the bringing up history. Sorry. I'm, I've got all these windows up now, so I'm, I'm going to get used to this, though. So by Thursday, when we do this long live and we're all focusing, remember Thursday is going to be like at least two hours and it's going to be all focusing on creating a new reality. Where are we going? What are we doing? What does it look like? And because I've been taken to this new earth, I want to bring up all of those experiences that I've had. Um, so I want to share the vibe with you guys so that we're focused in on that um, on the 4th of the 4th, 2024. Um, and then that's leading up to the eclipse. It's on the 8th so that we're in this right vibe of moving towards what we really want to create in this world. And we're using our imagination and our power to actually create that because it all starts with the vibration, the imagination, the vibration, the storyline, just like you're plotting out a, a cinematic story or something like that and you want to make a movie you want to actually have a tangible you know uh physical movie you have to you know have the imagination come through or the feeling come through and then the imagination and then the story plot and then you move from there into actually creating this the uh, movie so and it's exactly how we we actually create. Um, if you miss one of them and you're saying, oh, yeah, I don't want to listen to my imagination, then that gives an opportunity for somebody else outside of you to twist your imagination into what they want. And that's what's been happening with humanity's uh, reality for a very long time because we've been programmed to think that our imagination isn't got much you know, validation. And yet it is the, the key point, the starting point, the feminine point that starts us in this whole new um, cycle of creating utopia on earth or whatever we desire. Um, and we're not then working for others that are using it for their own utopia and, you know, making us become their slaves and so forth. So that's why I'm going to be bringing all that up again on Thursday. But um Hi, Margaret. Another thing that happened was I did an absolutely fabulous reading with a beautiful lady that I know called Sky, and all this information started to come through. I love it when I do readings with my soul tribe, and she's absolutely one of my soul tribes. So we've come through on the same frequency to pretty much having similar missions. And um, when we get together, all this other information starts to pour through. So I'll bring some of that up as well as we go along here. Um, but any case, let's get back to the history and so forth of, now this is just touching on because, you know, this is the free life, but I'm going to bring it up and then bring up the messages that they were bringing up. Um, so they were talking about just getting into that vibration again with them. They were talking about the entanglement that Pallades has with humans, with humanity. Um, and this happened eons ago. So we were in the Atlantis Lemuria age where we were living really more from the etherical um, way of recognizing that we could um, create through our thoughts and and that sort of thing um, back then. And when that happened, uh, we were, you know, at peace with ourselves because we were connected to our souls, but we didn't do a lot of working with the physical side of things until later on and all of a sudden the masculine energy because humanity has two sides to their to their brain to the hemisphere and we we learned all about the feminine side and then it was time for to bring in the masculine side and when that happened we started to meddle outside of ourselves which got a little crazy because we're like babies with matches and so the uh powers the principal people saw this and didn't want us to muck up other dimensional spaces so they shut us out of that kind of um, connection to our soul and brought, and that story brought through the energy lines of um, others that were more to do with working outside themselves, so the Anunnaki, the Taconians, and all those sort of beings that came in to um, teach us how to work outside of ourselves and that 
which then now got has now got to the point where where we have got to the crux of that, which is consuming itself because we've got you know we can't go any further with it because now it's time for us to bring in unity, bring in what we've learned from the right hemisphere. So a lot of people holding codes throughout these thousands of years through that whole logical learning and looking outside ourselves for everything. Um, and they were holding codes, but they were persecuted and all that sort of stuff. But now they are being born right now. And with the help of the light workers that have come straight from places that have more balance, um, and one of, and some of those are the Palladians that have come through. So the Palladians that have come through from the Atlantis Lemuria age that were helping guide us, they throughout that time they thought that something was going wrong. They didn't recognize at the moment um, the whole picture, the full picture, and so they tried to come in and help. Um, humanity come back to you know the right hemisphere even though the, the source energy knew what it was doing and so there was this entanglement of Pallades feeling guilty as well so there was this guilt that happened with Palladians and now they're readjusting to realize the bigger picture and uh, we have now many of us like myself and many others included have been born into bodies to actually bring this wisdom through so that um, there's a connection for you guys to recognize as humans that you have the ability to actually um, connect to your soul, connect to your intuitive side, connect to your imagination, just like we used back in the Atlantis Lemuria age. So because of that, um, Palladians are probably, and especially because Palladians are more like husbands, they are very similar in appearance. They can, they have different, um, different, uh, the uh, the species there's a lot more to this species obviously than looking like looking like we we look like but um humanity looks like but there's because they they've also there's some of them that are branched off into the cyanians and blue ray beings and so forth which they have risen their vibration higher um, than the actual physical body and so they can morph into energy balls and sorts and all sorts of things as well so there's different fractions of uh, perspectives even I mean Pleiades is a massive place we we say it's seven star system it's actually way more than seven stars um, and then you've got all, the, all of the bodies the planets and that sort of things that revolve around the stars as well um, so even if you're saying that you're from, um, I don't know, the Atlas um, star, then you're really from the planets that are around the Atlas star and that sort of thing and there's a lot more uh, you know, it's just it's just an infinity out there of possibilities, honestly. But humanity wants to put everything in a logical box because that's where we've come from. So if it doesn't fit in some sort of logical box that we're aware of, and then we kind of poo-poo it because it doesn't make sense to our logical mind because our logical mind has been in charge over the last so many years because we had to learn all about logic. So there's a lot of information right there. <laughs> Hey, Michael. Hey, Sheree. Hey, Janine. Good to see you guys in the chat bar and Mish. So, yeah, because I'm going Zoom, I finally figured out the chat bar. Yay! I'm going to be all set for Thursday when we go live for a couple of hours, focusing on creating a new world. So excited about that. Um, and anyone who's new, because I've had a few more subscribers since I posted that post about... Um, the whole, you know, what's going on with the with those the powers so in in charge at the moment. Well, not really. <laughs> um, they think they are, but yeah. Anyways, sorry. I I'll just ground myself a little more, and we'll get some more information coming through. I'm really, it's a really um happy kind of a vibe though at the moment. Um, when they're coming through. That this is this excitement that's happening, and um, I feel like a giddy school kid um, <laughs> at the moment. But I have to ground that as well, you know, uh, to bring through these messages. Let's read what they wrote. So, on the thirtieth of March, I channeled this through message from the Palladians. Whatever humanity interacts with changes. It doesn't matter what it is. Actually, um, they said that 
it's the Palladian's message, but Arcturians also were there as well for this message. <laughs> they, Arcturians want to be noticed as well because my team consists of the Arcturians and the Palladians, although I'm more inclined to be of the Palladians, but the Arcturians um, have very valuable information and wisdom and the way that they put things is more to do with um, kind of like a scientific reasoning behind things as well they are more vibrational um so and so it's like a team that i work with cyanians pladians and the arcturians um depending on what uh perspective i want to bring in anyway whatever humanity interacts with changes it doesn't matter what it is your very ability to observe and experience changes the vibration of that which has been seen, felt, or experienced. Therefore, the part you play within the whole cosmos shifts when you, you expand your awareness and start to accept us in your reality. The universe is forever changing as you do. Just like an ant that crawls across your bed might not view the value um, sorry, might not view your value as a human, but you as a human will choose to react to the ant on your bed. But say that ant has just as much understanding of your world as its own world, then its interaction could be to message you with breadcrumbs spelling out, I see you then your interaction will be completely different, right, with that ant if that actually happened on your bed. So the more that humanity expands their reality into ours without fear means the way we converse with you will shift. You can go from entering your, we can, we can go from entering into your dreams, which the Pleiadians love entering into the dreams because that's when you're in the alpha, theta, um, delta um, state of mind, especially the alpha, theta, and they can, they can enter in from that soul's perspective Given you a lot more messages. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so we can go from entering into your dreams to channeling through you to visitations while you're in an alpha theta state. So if you just wake up and then you see them etherically for a little bit, or if you're in like a meditative state or a uh you know, dream like, you know, how you kind of go off and fairies while you're awake, that's going into alpha, and then you might see them in the side peripheral vision or something. Or and then to actual physical contact. All because you've shifted your perception of us. And it's also to do with the logical mind now accepting. So our logical mind, like our, our intuitive mind knows, our intuitive mind is connected to us all and knows that they are there. It knows that there are different beings and different frequencies that we can't, aren't quite aware of until we raise our vibration into that frequency so that we can actually interact with them. The logical brain is the one that you have to convince. So that's that was brought up with Sky in, in her reading as well. So we need to teach our logical brain that these things are possible. Um, and so it can be like um, they're telling me breadcrumbs, like that's why they said breadcrumbs are the ants, um, that, like little breadcrumbs of thing, instances that happen, oh, I saw a spark over there, oh, I saw a light over there, or a I have a really strong feeling or oh, something's coming up in my head that I don't think it's me, that sort of thing, like little breadcrumbs and then the logical brain's trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out, and not until the logical brain stops trying to figure it out and just trust the right hemisphere. Okay, I don't know what's happening. Okay, logical brain, just shish for a while. Let's just experience the information coming through. Um, then you shift so once all, all of that starts to happen and you shift your perception of us, you you are the shift. Oh, yeah, then they said you are the shift that you have been waiting for. Um, and there's so much more to experience once you start to shift. Also, they said at some point what you are seeking outside of you to become has to become the knowing that it is you or you will be forever seeking so that's really important as well. I do have another message here. I'll see if that one comes up, but it's more to do with 
source energy and alignment with source energy and stuff like that. Get back to this video. Um, but yeah, to do with the dreams and that going back to that sort of thing, um, what can happen, and I know this has happened with me personally, is that you could be just dreaming a normal dream, like you're in the middle of a dream, la, 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 something's happening over there, you know, you're walking through a town or whatever, and then boom, it's like um, the energy shifts, it's like the energy shifts abrupt, can, can shift abruptly and in walks a Palladian man or um, a very good-looking blonde guy. That's what happened to me. There's been a few occasions in my dreams where they've entered. And then you're fixated in on that being. So the dream kind of falls away that you were doing before and you start to fixate on their energy, which is more powerful than the dream that you were having. Um, and then they they can give, gift you the messages. So what happened to me was um, through this dream, this Palladian man came and he had the blonde hair and I'm pretty good looking. Um, and then we started to dance. And then he came up to me and put his forehead on my forehead. And he chanted, starting with Ra. Ra is the only thing I can remember. And I know that Ra in Pallades means sun. So it was to do with channeling information through this, our sun. Um, and I think that's how they actually uh, bring the information through from their their son through to our son. It's kind of like a portal from Pallades, Pallades star system to our star system. And um, so they started off with Ra and they went into these, he went into these syllables like Ra, Mo, Ni, Sa, whatever. I, I can't remember the others. I can't remember them at all, but I do remember Ra. And then he turned his head and he started to speak in this language. To me, it seemed like between um, Egyptian and Celtic. And then he placed his forehead on my forehead again. And he started to chant the Ra, whatever. And I did this about five times. And during that time, I started to wake up. And when I was waking up, my whole body was visibly vibrating. So that was one of my, I got the message afterwards that he was a pupil of mine in on Pallades. And I said to him that one of his things to advance his soul was to uh, connect with me and help me awaken because I'm going to lose myself completely coming to earth. And so when I get, I had to raise my vibration up to a certain level um, of awareness of them and then he could come in and then he did this kind of ceremony thing and then from there on I had more contact with him or with the Palladians um, so that's one of the things that can happen is in your dreams all of a sudden the dream kind of stops and then some some being could enter and it doesn't have to be a Palladian I've had other beings that have entered and gifted me information the lyrans did the same thing um and that's a whole other story that i haven't even touched on <laughs> uh but yeah so there's all these different ways that they can communicate with us first um and then they want us to get in to get into their vibration they want us to get into their feelings so it's a great place to be in a dream because when you if you awaken with that feeling, then they're saying that's the compass of our vibration. And so if you can remember that vibration, which is usually a lot clearer, um, then or it's a lot high vibers and happier. Um, not it's yeah, it's a different vibe. And so then you then know that when you want to click into them, you can like learn to channel through that vibration. I'm also going to bring this up in the master classes that I'm that are coming up as well. So I'm going to put together four master classes: how to clear the mind, how to balance ourselves, how to bring in the soul more, um, how to use our imagination, how to um, then connect to our pineal gland, and how to advance into 
telepathy channeling because that is the universal language is telepathy um, and channeling. So channeling is, is to do with information coming from beings that are outside our reality. Uh, telepathy is like human to human, like, um, but then we have to have another human that's just as clear to be able to do that with um or you have to be a master of it like I had with when I met the Cherokee elder who held my hand and she talked to me being a human to human she talked to me uh, telepathically but she had to go into a trance like state to do that because I wasn't completely clear so she had to um, move into that to be able to connect to me and my heart, my soul, and that sort of thing. But all of this is absolute. Like I, one hundred percent, I'm here to tell you, I've experienced this, and so it is an absolute. Um, it's an absolute go. Uh, this is where we're going to, is where humanity can go to, and it's there's so many more gifts other than that. That's one of the first gifts that comes that comes through because. And then it gives us the chance to have the wisdom pouring through us. And that's the reason why they wanted me to do the master classes, not only for, you know, whoever's in the chat bar, but for the future people coming. So um, they, they keep saying there's more coming um, into my audience, into my, my reality. So that's to help because to I have to stand up and become that leader I, and I've gone through going through a lot of shadow work and a lot of my own work to be able to raise my vibration into acceptance of where I'm actually going, but it is my purpose and I know that. And that same goes for all of you guys, especially the ones that have been following me already, right? You have this specific purpose and mission that you know within yourself is part of your reason for coming here or being here. Um, so that you can shift into these higher vibrations and make contact not only with the Palladians or whatever, whoever else is part of your soul tribe, your soul tribe being in the etheric realm. Um, so even though I'm talking about contact with Palladians, the reason why they're bringing that through, though, they said is because they're probably the first ones that are going to be making contact with us, actual physical contact. It's more likely them because they look similar to who we are Plus, they've you know they've got uh, their vibration is close, and they've also had that entanglement with our history. So they they will have to come in next. The the um and and they will dissolve the illusion of who has actually been in charge of us as well. That's interesting. That's that's an interesting message that just came through. Then they will dissolve the illusion of those that have been in charge now. Um, because humanity thinks that we're following other humans and we're not. We are actually following the orders of those that have been keeping in the shadows, funnily enough, the shadows um, of humanity's consciousness so that they can um, reap all the rewards that they want and use, use our energy for how they want to use it just because their whole purpose of being here was to teach humanity how to work outside of ourselves but that got it has has to get to a point of feeling very 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 uncomfortable before we start to go we don't want to do this anymore and then we allow the energy vortex or the energy portals to open up for for palladians to be born here or other beings of higher consciousness to be born here um so that they can teach us how to come back into balance again and that sort of thing so yeah, contact is absolute. It's going to happen. Um, and you might say not in this lifetime. Absolutely for some of you, it will happen in this lifetime because it was meant to happen. Some of you, you are prepping for your children's children or your children. You are prepping for that to have have. Uh, to happen so you're prepping and the more that you become clear the more that your dna starts to resonate in a different frequency even if the children have already been born it awakens them and their um their mission as well so the clearer that you can become you can be you will be their guides um afterwards as well when you leave this world and then you become the guides to those that are coming up but they then they have a very clear guide right that's helping them 
to make contact as well. So even though they're saying, yes, contact is absolutely can happen now for some, um, it's an ongoing process throughout the generations to come um, until it becomes infused in humanity's consciousness that we are more than just um, here on earth. And all of this, all of the movies that they've been showing, they're all being um they're all programmed to get you into fear and to to worry and all that sort of stuff to keep you in that because they know they know those those that are in charge know that this is coming right so they they know that if they don't put some sort of fear game on it it's just going to become obvious to most people that this is a love vibration that we're moving into so uh, um, if you are going to watch anything that's to do with contact and it's got a lot of fear based and be the observer of that movie, don't be entangled in the fear, please. Um, that's really important to know that. Like watch the movies if you want, if you think it's exciting, but just see it as this is just coming straight from their game, not for what's really going to happen. Because as we go along too, they're saying there's going to be a lot more um, cinematography and movies coming through that are going to show you what can actually be achieved through finding balance within oneself and expanding your reality to to their reality. Um, so watch out for that sign too as you start to increase your reality. I think at this point they're telling me to bring up that other message so I'm going to bring that up as well. Janine, um, isn't it great that you always have more stories to tell than time to to tell them? <laughs> so perfect. I do. I have. They really prep me well with a lot of stories, a lot of experience. These aren't like made up stories. These are actual experiences that I've had. I have had so many. It's unbelievable. Like sometimes. I would wake up and there would be, I would have three different messages in one night um, and leading me to something that would show me something and then I'd go to sleep and then I'd wake up and see something else. Oh my gosh, I've, ha I've had so many experiences and now that I'm 56, you can imagine how many I've had. Um, and they kind of all come to a stop when I was around 50. I didn't see so much anymore. Um, because they wanted me to trust the channeling and they wanted me to go live channeling. So they didn't want me to focus in on the messages coming in a visual or actual, sometimes it was a real way, like they rarely came and visited me. They wanted me to focus in on channeling. So the last since few years, um, it was a slow progress of just bringing up uh, messages once every month or so one message every month and then putting that out to on my youtube and now i can just fluidly bring through their messages so i'm on par i'm on track um for where i'm supposed to be going which is fantastic in any case i will read this next message so this was written on my mother's birthday april the first <laughs> my beautiful beautiful mother um, who and happy birthday to her, who taught me a lot about honesty, integrity. She's a very wise woman and she had a lot of she had good boundaries. Um, and she was very wise. Uh, she also had the gift to be able to see into other frequencies, but she shut it down because she was persecuted in life before that for doing what she did for what I'm doing now. And I am so, 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 so grateful for everything that she's gifted me. Um, I don't, I wouldn't be here now and been going, even my soul, like, couldn't go through, be, be who I am now unless I went through a beautiful soul that was so strong as she was. And she is an absolute powerhouse. In any case, in the end, this is the message that came up on April the 1st. In the end, you will come to find that all of your decisions and experiences are all that exist, that others have their own point of view going on their own journey, that the only way for you to become a part of each other's reality is to have the same valued story running through your mind and energy fields. 
that this collective is entrapped in its own story of distrust, deception, and war within itself. And so one can never see above the other in order to find a way out. When you come across another whose story doesn't vibe with yours and you try to control it without going inwards, then you become a part of that energy field, enforcing the very existence of that reality. But if you see it as just another story that you have figured out a way out of it, then you don't become entangled because you know you can move out of it at any moment. <clears throat> the power that you are seeking is therefore within you to change your own story, to be at, to have the ability to change your own story and align with that which you truly desire, leaving all others that only see the value of trying to control their outside world to play out their own story of control meets resistance. Um, yeah, so that was not really to do with contact, but it is something that we do need to become aware of because of of our own our own understanding that our point of view is all that really matters. Um, and we're, and that's not to disregard other people's point of view or put or belittle or anything like that. But it is something that you can change, and when you change it, and then you can see others for their story and their storyline that they're going on, and you don't need to get entangled into that story anymore. Um, you allow them to become that story, uh, but you can come dip in and out to help, and that's how you can become their guides because you're like, well, I can get out of that story anytime because I know that's not my story and I'm not getting entangled into it because I I know how to get out of it. I've already been in that story and I got myself out. Say, for instance, someone's watching a conspiracy or something that's leading us towards more fear and more horror and more all of that. Then um, if you're like, well, I'm not going to do this anymore and I've learned how to place my energy into what I want to create, then you can go back to that person, help them with a little thread of understanding if they're willing, if they're willing, they might not be, and not judge them either. Don't judge them because as soon as you're judging them, you're seeing yourself as more important. And Source Energy wanted to experience many, many different stories while it's here on Earth, wanted to, to also experience the worst scenarios to see what it feels like when we do come back to love within ourselves. But your story is the most important. It's really what they're trying to say. Your story and how you you work with the energies is more important. Anyways, uh, okay, so that was just a little sidetrack there. <laughs> to go on. <clears throat> um, I just... Sorry, I've lost how much time I've been on here. So I'm just going to have a check in. Nope. Okay, I'll just go with my clock. So guys, um, let's see what else is there. Anything else that needs to come through while I'm here? about contact <laughs> this thing, there's a lot more information to come through but that might be it for now for, for now um because sometimes I get like a lot of information coming through because I'm used to it um and then I can overwhelm people <laughs> I do tend to overwhelm people um not to say that I'd overwhelm everybody in my chat bar some people are so in line with me in that bar, that chat bar. But in any case, I think well, let's just have a little bit of fun, they said, and do a couple of tarots. Um, I'll do a, a quick, a very quick general of the energies at the moment. Yes, the energies and what can we do to help ourselves with these energies at the moment? What can we do to help ourselves with the energies at the moment, please? Not at present at the moment. It's a real shift, massive shift that's happening, and it's an alignment, a, a massive alignment while this eclipse is coming up. Excuse me. Massive alignment from the fear game into the creating, the creation game.
Okay, we've got a few and I might take that one as well. And so we've got, oh, we've got quite a few. That's bought out of one go there. All right. Hmm. Any case, we have the Ten of Pentacles was an absolute. That was the first one that came out and it came out on its own. <sighs> so Ten of Pentacles is like, your wishes come true. Hello. <laughs> um, everything that you've wished for and grounded too, like grounded, grounded wishes coming true. There's a lot of gifts coming. Um, like we can shift our reality. Like if you, they're showing me all this gold in a vault and they're showing me all this precious sort of stuff hoarded in a vault. And then when we and our, when we and our mind stop, stop with the, uh, when we allow freedom within our right hemisphere to be able to connect more to our soul, that in reflection brings in the abundance that we can also connect to outside of us as in using our imagination to shift the story and so forth. So when we do that, then the groundedness of the abundance can come through. And so we can then align ourselves with many, many more gifts coming through. Um, the next one that we got was a magician, but it was in reverse that I, I picked it up in reverse. So uh, they're showing me to lay down the tools. You have all these gifts, lay them down because more, more are wanting to come through. And if you're fixated on the things that you already know about yourself, say, for instance, you know how to use um, the cup of love, your heart and giving to others, uh, you know that that's part of your whole destiny <clears throat> and sharing your wisdom and so forth. Excuse my voice, <clears throat> it's early in the morning and I'm talking a lot straight away. If you if you lay down that cup and go, yeah, I already know that that gift, then the ability to be able to see other gifts can come through. So there's more gifts that are wanting to come through um, by laying down the gifts that you already know about. And then we have um the we have the nine of swords but it's come in reverse as well so we're letting go of a lot of the mind stories letting go of the logical being in charge and telling us the woe stories logical mind needs to protect ourselves it's that's really what it's what it's trying to do because it doesn't understand or it thinks it has to do everything it reminds me of my beautiful father who loved playing touch football and he would go and he was in a mixed team and he would go and go and go until he dropped because he thought that if he wasn't on the field that it you know that he wasn't accomplishing he needed to keep going and yet he was feeling really lethargic needed a rest you know so we need to to put our logical mind and it's Oh, sorry, logical mind this is all reverse. Logical mind in its rightful place. Um, and say, you know what, you don't need to over, over protect me. You don't need to do all of the work. My intuitive, my soul, the unknown vortex that you don't know about has can play a valuable part in this game. And then we had the hangman coming in on its side. So Another lying down card, like some for some reason they're saying rest at the moment because things are going to change. Rest at the moment because things are going to change for the benefit of more of us. Just chill, chill X, chill X. Okay, and then all these cards came and fell out in one go. So I'm going to see if I can read these together. Oh, my gosh. 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 Okay. <laughs> wow. Here we go. So we have, turn them all around. We have the world card. We have death. We have the lovers. We have eight of wands in reverse and nine of cups. So right at this moment, The world card. For the world card is all to do with full circle, the breaking down of something. The world card in reverse is giving me the feeling of the breaking down of something, breaking down of an entire, breaking down of an entire world, the breaking down of that within your psyche. 
letting go, let go, let go, let go, let go of all of the stories that you thought was going to be because it whole new things coming through here and you can't you can't allow that to happen when you're still holding on to a whole heap of stories that you think that's the way it's going to happen. We have to do the nine to five grind. We have to get up in the morning and we have to do them. We have to pay our taxes and we have to have to have to have to let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. They can't stress this enough. And it, like when we start to let go of these stories and put our attention and focus into something completely different here, it means, you know, it's not saying that you don't, you stop paying your taxes straight away because um, it's like, when you do have that, have to do something like that or pay that bill or pay or whatever, just do it very quickly, let it go. It's kind of like treating it like your logical brain and um, and a negative thought. You know, okay, whatever, I do it really quickly and let it go. If it has to be in my reality, I do it real quickly and let it go because I'm focusing most of my attention here on this. So that's coming up for that. So there we've got the deaf card with it, right? Um, obviously that's the same that's why that's come through together and then with the lover's card of choosing a different path choosing the path of love choosing the path of your own self of self love um, what are you really like this is so important I know this is the message a lot of this, these messages that come through in my um, you know past channelings and stuff but they're really really emphasizing this right now with this uh, this eclipse come this is a porthole that's opening up for an opportunity for us to actually shift our reality from the inside out don't focus in <coughs> also <coughs> excuse me don't focus in on the whole wide world focus in on your world on your that's why they brought up that message before you your perception of your world is more important at the moment because that's going to change the outside, your outside world even more. And the more of us that do this, the more unaligned that those experiences of the old ways are going to fall away. Um, and then we have the eight of wands in reverse. So this is a fast moving cast. Something wants to come in fast, but they're wanting us to, they're bringing up that lying down hangman again. Just chillax at the moment, just at the moment, because something new is coming in, could come in quite fast. Um, and in the nine of cups in reverse with that fast card, see something new, something beautiful wants to come in. It's in reverse. It's sort of like an, uh, uh, it's just there, guys. It's like on the tip of our reality. Like we're, we're on, we're teetering on the edge of jumping off that verbial cliff into this unknown vortex of absolute beauty, wonder, excitement, utopia. This is the reason why they wanted me to do this long live on on Thursday, the 4th of the 4th of 4th. So 6 a.m. I'm going to start early on um, my morning. Um, and we're going to go, I don't know, it could be eight, could be longer. I don't know. We'll just see how it all feels. Um, but I'm going to bring up some movies of that they've gifted me, um, that I've put together of the future um, and so forth. And I'm so happy that I've got the Zoom going so that I can actually bring up um, some some share screen things and that sort of things to share with you because some of these movies are in such a beautiful vibe of the new earth and I've encapsulated my experience in them so that you guys can feel them as well and then we can discuss all these things in the chat bar so get your thinking caps on on um you know, what do you actually want to experience in this new earth? Like share your share your wisdom, share your advice. And um and maybe we'll get some beautiful imagery as well of new earths and stuff um that look beautiful. Doesn't matter where they come from, so long as they have give you a good feeling, and that's the most important thing. Yes. So if anyone does have any sort of um things they want to share with me for this live or if they want to join me in on the live I don't know we could like have a collaborative uh, zoom call if you wanted to or you could just stay in the chat bar that's all good um you could email me um my I will put my uh envision me at live.com.au email link and on this um video 
And if you've got imagery or something that you think is could help us, then go for it. But I'll bring up everything that I have as well. I just want to share this with you guys, this experience, and get us to really, really focus in on this new earth, this massive jump that we're going into. Um, three, the world, six, the lovers, nine cups, nine, three, six, nine. Yes, Cheryl, thank you. Yeah, it's a progression, isn't it, into that. I like that too. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, sorry, it's the uh, chat bars being in Zoom. It's 20 seconds delay, so sorry if I'm a little slow on the chat bar, but at least I've got it going. Um, wonderful. Fourth of the fourth, 2 p.m. in USA. Okay, cool. Yeah, I tried to make it, it was either going to be at night or it's going to be in the morning. And so it's going to be on the third for some of you. Don't worry about that because then during the fourth, you've got that right vibration, right? So that's why I decided to do it in the morning because even if you're on the other side of the world, you move through, through you start using that vibration over the next few days until the eclipse, like just keep on. And don't, if you get in an argument or something bad happens or whatever, just be just release it as soon as you can don't don't poo poo yourself don't make yourself feel like you have to try or anything like that just allow the story to 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 revolve the saying <laughs> allow the story to come and to go um it's okay you you're not meant to be perfect through this this is not <laughs> It's because we're so uh, entrenched on trying to everything, trying to be perfect, that actually creates disharmony. It's in the acceptance of what happens that we just ride with it. If you're crying, if you're going through an upset moment, go through an upset moment, cry. <laughs> Don't panic. But they're really just wanting us to more so let go of the idea that that story in the past is going to keep going forever. They want that story of you know doing nine to five jobs and and feeling entrenched into that that fear based matrix. They want that to break up in your mind. Let it go um, because it, you have to let something go for something to come in you. And so don't don't be too hard on yourself if you are in, in emotions and that because we are going through an eclipse. So, yeah, I think I will leave it here, guys. I love you, love you, love you heaps until Thursday um, morning. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. I'm going to get my cup of tea. I'm going to get a bit of food and some snacks and, you know, really relax and enjoy this. Um, and, you know, just make it not so, not so, um, uh, what what's the word? I can't even think of the word. But any case, just make it an easy, easy go lucky kind of an event. Love you heaps. So until next time.